everyone. Uh, I'm Erwan Normand. I was a student at uh, ETS in uh, Montreal, Canada. Uh, now I'm working at uh, INRIA Bordeaux in uh, France. And with my uh, director, Michael McGuffin, we worked on how we can enlarge a smartphone using AR. So first of all, uh, for the motivation, uh, today a smartphone with large screen are very popular. They are computers, very powerful computers right on your pocket, but they have reached a limit size to be held in one hand. And at the same time, uh, AR headset allows us to create multiple virtual, screen, virtual screens. We can move them, resize them uh, as we want but they still need the research to determine the best interfaces and interaction with these virtual screens. So we propose to use one virtual screen to extend a smartphone. So we called it a VESAD, and for virtually extended screen aligned display. So the AR headset is displaying a virtual screen which is synchronized uh, and collocated with the smartphone. So the user has a feeling of one unique display. And there, is, uh, there are previous works that, uh, that already used AR to extend a uh, display, physical display. For example, Serrano proposed uh, to use virtual windows as uh, secondary screens. Uh, and you can use it uh, using your keyboard and your mouse. And you could also take away uh, the mobile screen in a mobile usage and uh, you, can, uh, you could use your uh, smartphone to interact with the virtual screens. And another good example, it's Multify. Uh, Jens Gruber uh, proposed to uh, create displays with um, AR, HMD, and smartwatches. Um, they propose different modes. Uh, first of all, it's body online mode, where the HMD is displaying some content and uh, you're using your smartphone uh, to do spatial pointing. Uh, another mode is side by side, you, like in the desktop GUI, you're using your mobile phone to interact with a virtual window. And the third mode, it's device to line, uh, where the AR headset is enlarging the smartwatch screen. So our VESAD ID is the we wanted to push further this device in line mode on what we call the VESAD. So in our work, uh, we explored the design concept and then we conducted a study to evaluate this concept. So this is some mockups of the concept. Uh, you can use the extended screen to complement the physical screen, for example, to display uh, apps in the background, or you can have more detailed notification uh, you can also use the extended screen as a one wall display uh, to extend what the phone is already displaying, for example, for Google Maps or for displaying uh, a photo gallery. You can also use uh, the extended view for tooltips or for annotation, uh, or you can uh, simply use um, the extended view to display high resolution content such as such as an image. Uh, we could also imagine a chat application, a uh, traditional chat application, but in the side of the mobile phone, you could display a conversation option or the list of uh, participants. We also Im imagine some uh, interaction technique, uh, for example, with a wrist motion of, um, of from a wrist motion, you can you could change uh, really easily uh, the application you're uh, running on the VESAD. So you, can, you could switch to another background app. And uh, the user could also uh, take one virtual window from the VESAD and decide to pin it on the air. Uh, he could use a slight to hang gesture. He could also use the same gesture to tie back uh, the window on the VESAD. So uh, we wanted to implement this concept. Uh, we wanted, first of all, to use the HoloLens, but unfortunately, the field of view is uh, too narrow to see a uh, wall extended view. So we decided, we decided to uh, implement our own video pass-through AR headset. Uh, the idea is similar to the AR Rift from step two. Uh, we used the uh, over-vision stereoscopic camera 
it has fisheye lenses and uh, the video um, we display the video output on a VR headset, uh, such as uh, an Oculus. And finally, finally, we did the... to do some research to correctly classify an item. So input and output is done only on the phone. The second one is uh, using input on the phone, then uh, the VESAD as output. So you have a, you, you, you can be quicker because of the extended view. And uh, the third one is using uh, VESAD output and meter input. So gesture, oh, I forgot some detail. Um, we use a really standard gesture uh, using the phone input, like in a Google map, so it's tap, uh, pan, and uh, pinch to zoom gestures. And uh, we did similar gestures in the middle interaction, so you need to press an item to select it, and you need to do a drag if you want to pan the grid. Now, uh, one question is, how do you allow a user uh, performing a zoom with middle interaction? We wanted, first of all, uh, using pitch to zoom gesture on the extended view, but uh, it was very difficult to do because uh, the sand and the index are very near. So if you want to select one item, you can do uh, zooming uh, involuntary. So we decided to use the same drag gesture for zooming, and the user has to uh, select from dragging or zooming. And uh, we also add uh, two uh, factors for, to control the difficulty. First one is the text size, so it controls how much the user needs to zoom to see uh, the label. So there was big label, or so it was easier and harder. And controlled how much a user needed to to, uh, to classify um, a, a, an item. So it was easy or it was hard. And we conducted the experiment with 12 participants. Uh, there is more details on the papers. 
First of all, we measured the task completion time, and there is a significantly difference between all the techniques. And the second one is the best, the fastest. So it's uh, input on the phone with the extended view. We also measured the number of the heroes. So there was uh, two, two measures. The first one is the number of heroes, uh, the misclassified disk, but there is no difference, significant difference. And the second one is the number, we counted the number of time a user selected an item. And uh, the second technique was better than the other one. So the user was uh, more efficient. And we also ask a user their preference, so lower is better. Uh, users significantly prefer the second uh, technique. We also ask uh, some other questions, so you can find details on the papers. Finally, from these results, uh, we can say that uh, the VESAD is good enough, and uh, with touch inputs, with phone inputs, uh, the users were the fastest, was less error prone, and uh, preferred these techniques. And we have some design recommendation. Uh, if you want to use a VSAD, a handled VSAD, if you're using phone input, uh, you should um, you, you could use you, sh you could use uh, the display, the extended view for input, but the user needs to pan to bring a target on the touch screen. So you should put targets near the touch screen. It can be very frustrating to, have a, to do a lot of panning to reach a target. And if you're using meter input, it's important to have as an um, interaction zone on the side of the dominant end. It's very uncomfortable to uh, cross end to do a selection. So in summary, we proposed a new concept. Uh, it's a smartphone screen extended by AR. And our contribution, uh, we did a design study. We also released the open source market tracking uh, library for Unity. And uh, our results from our experiment indicate that uh, the VSAD uh, with the phone input was the faster, fastest, less error prone, and subjective preferred. But uh, facade with meter input uh, was not, didn't well perform because of untracking. So we think uh, it has potential if you can improve the end tracking. And some future work, um, it could be interesting to uh, have uh, additional tasks like a Google map. Uh, to evaluate the VSAD on a desktop, and uh, it will be interesting too to compare uh, our interaction technique with gaze pointing, as you can do on HoloLens. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? No. Are you from the internet? No, there is one. Thank you. If you decouple the phone touch input from, spatially from, from the output, then I can hold my hand in a more convenient position. I can still scroll with my thumb. Did you consider that sort of or, uh, decoupled input space, decoupling input space from output space? I'm sorry, I didn't understand. <laughs> if, you, if, if you do not have to raise your phone, you could lower yes. your phone. Yes. If you're not looking on the screen, yes. you could still use the touch. And there's no fatigue if I have yeah. my hand lower. In fact, um, yeah, yes, uh, you're completely right. Um, we, we wanted to uh, explore the device online, but if you're referring to Multify, uh, you could use side-by-side uh, -side mode where the virtual screen is not aligned with your, disp your, with your uh, smartwatch or your smartphone, so you could redirect input uh, from your touch screen to a virtual window not aligned. Okay. I have one, one more question. No, then I have one last question. So you chose a video see-through HMD to be able to have the um, the size of the phone in your user study, right? Did you consider other form factors, like a, a small uh, watch or a smaller phone, 
Do we able to use it on an um, optical see-through display? Uh, no, it could be interesting to... Uh, yes, it, it, we, we could do that. Um, but uh, yes, it was a design choice. Uh, okay, you wanted to do it. But of course, video pass-throughs is not... Uh, is, there is compromise. Uh, there is some latency and um, the resolution is worse than an opt optical see-through. Uh, but I, I forgot to mention, but in all the conditions, the user uh, was wearing the headset, so mm -hmm. they were all affected by uh, the, the, the problem of the video pass-through. All right. Do we have any more questions? No. Then let's thank all the speakers again.